the women's ice hockey regular season has ended and it's tournament time all around the NCAA. With that being said, the Quinnipiac Loons ice hockey team has a first round matchup against the Harvard Crimson on Saturday. We'll break down how the team should approach this matchup and what to look out for inside the ECAC starting right now. Welcome to Inside the ECAC. I'm women's ice hockey beat reporter Katie Blukovic, alongside my fellow beat reporters Anthony Rossi, Eli Ehlers, and Zach Stokinger. We will be looking into all the teams as the ECAC women's ice hockey playoffs have arrived. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. I'm ready to debate. I'm ready to agree as well, but I'm super excited. I'm super pumped to be here, and I'm ready to debate you guys. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think we got some uh, interesting picks coming up, so uh, <laughs> let's get into it. Well, I'm excited to hear what you guys have, so let's get right into it. Quinnipiac ended the ECAC regular season with a 13-9-0 record. From what we've seen this season, Zach, what are your thoughts on the Bobcats going into the tournament? Now, going into the tournament, they had a great offensive season overall, and a lot of that came from their defense. But my thoughts going in, um, the defensive side of the puck plays a lot like Brent Burns. You know, a lot of his contributions come on the offensive side of the puck, and he's not exactly known for great defense all of the time. So going into a loaded ECAC uh, tournament, I'm, that defense is going to be a struggle for them. And we saw down the stretch, they have not been great defensively. Pretty simple, you just have to, defend, defense wins championship, guys, and that's what you're gonna need in the ECACs. So, I gotta step in here. If we're going into how the defense is there, too, well, we got a long show, guys. We got a long show. So I'm gonna hit you guys with some stats here. Uh, I'm gonna give you the records. You guys have to tell me what time frame this was from and like who this would have been against. Oh, this is awesome. I love this already. Uh, did, oh, six, <laughs> six and one. When would that be from? Any guesses? That would be before the new year. That was from new year until now. Oh my gosh. Oh. Well, seven, We're eight already and on a one. Good start. Seven, eight and one. Zach, any guesses? Why are you putting this on me, man? I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna say from the new year till now. No, seven, eight and one against ranked opponents. Seven, eight and one against ranked opponents. Now, looking at the USCHO, Ohio State's one, Wisconsin is two, Clarkson is three, Minnesota four, Colgate five, Cornell six, St. Lawrence seven, Minnesota Duluth eight, Quinnipiac sits at nine, and we'll stop at 10, St. Cloud State. Any guesses on what the record is against those ranked teams? We know a lot of them are in the ECAC. Any guesses? It's not good. It's I like know that much. Two and two and eight? No, something? not even two. Zero, yeah. eight. Oh. Zero, it is excuse not me, good. Excuse me. One, eight, and one. I have... Very little confidence in this team. I will say, I you think- You have a little confidence in Quinnipiac? In Quinnipiac, yeah. I think- yeah. Okay. I think I they're a good that. team. I think they'll, I feel like I'm pretty confident they're gonna beat Harvard. I think that's be really bad if they don't beat Harvard. I think they'll beat Harvard. I think maybe they'll do good in the second round. Other than that, no confidence in this Yeah, team. so for me on the thoughts of Quinnipiac going into the tournament, their defense is really solid. I have to disagree with you there. Yeah. Their offensive pressure on the defense is so good. Kate Riley, Kendall Cooper, Maddie Simoskevich, I put up numbers for this team. And one thing that I agree with you, Stokes, is their defense is a little bit tough. You can't keep relying on Logan Andres because you can't bail you out all the time, and eventually the fatigue is going to start kicking in. But one thing I have to mention is this team has been banged up all yeah, year long. Absolutely. And that is one thing I want to segue into the next question as well, is just get healthy, please. Because that's their one struggle that I've been noticing, is they have been yet to have a fully healthy squad throughout this entire year. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. And I think you talk about Logan Andres a little bit. She started every single regular season game this year except for one against Post. And that Tatum Blacker played that game. They destroyed. Well, there was those. no reason. There was no reason for Logan to start, obviously. So, I mean, personally, I don't feel very confident in Logan Andres. I think a sixth-year goalie. She's big. She can barely move at I'm this point. I'm confident in like, her. It's I'm just confident. the fatigue is going to I'm set I'm confident. It I just think she's way too tired at this point of the season, yes, and they have put way too big of a load on her. There were certainly points in the season where you could debate that you needed to rest her, especially against teams like Harvard or Dartmouth, teams that are not particularly great in the ECAC. Uh, sorry, you need to like 
get those experience. You need to get experience for Tatum Black. You it's need like to... she's not going to get yeah, this exactly. lucky all the time. No. It's like no. these saves are really solid and there's been multiple times this year where I've been like, oh my gosh, she can still move like this in her sixth year? Yeah, absolutely. And like, well, she's, she's not a grandma, dude. Well, but like, <laughs> she, she has bailed her team out way too many times. And it, it's honestly kind of sad that this team has had to rely on her so much because there are points where it's like, what are we doing? You have offensive star powers like Kaylin LaMarche. And yes, Kaylin had a great year. She produced big time for this team. But there's a point where it's like, why are we solely relying on one player each and every game that you go into? Yes. And you can't do that when you get into playoff hockey. I agree with you. Yeah. Agree. Those are all great points. So moving on, we've seen this team struggle at times losing to many ranked opponents like Colgate, Clarkson, and Cornell. So what do you think needs to be improved on this team? I'm going to start with you, Anthony. Okay, so one big thing is they need to be better offensively. Their yeah. offense actually needs to play offense instead of their defense. That is the one problem that I've had. And like I mentioned earlier, Kate Riley, Kendall Cooper, they've been creating more of the offensive chances for the team, rushing into the zone, getting those breaks that they have. Most of their goals have come from those two and Kale in the margin, Sadie Fear, and Myla Bad, and that's about it. That's, you can't run a team up of five players. It takes a whole 18, 20 person roster to actually do some damage. And just more pressure. That's how I feel because we saw that in the Minnesota Duluth series and they were able to successfully beat them in one of the games and then tie them in overtime, which is a really good accomplishment if you think about it. Absolutely. No, yeah. I totally agree. And I think when you look at from that Minnesota Duluth series on, this team really struggled down the stretch. And I, I think I'm in agreement with you here. The, the offense needs to step up big time. Someone who, there are two players who I'm looking out for. Alexa Hoskin and Emerson Vargas. They both were injured. They both had their moments this year while, once they got back. Uh, I mean, Alexa Hoskins, in her 12 games back from New Year's onward, she had four goals, two assists for eight points. That's pretty good. Like, I'll give it to her. It's not bad. But it's, it's not, not bad, perfect. but it's not perfect. And like we said, this if this offense can't step up, I don't see this team going very far. You need to add other players into the factor. You have transfers such as Dress Schreiber and Julian Nears. They haven't been producing as much as they, the Bobcats would want them to at this point in the season. And another, another stat here. Captain Kate Riley is the leading points getter on this team as a defenseman. And she's your best defensive defenseman. That's not good going into the ECAC. It's I, I, not I, fully good, but it's not fully bad either because well, your defense can produce the offense. I understand it's just that. getting more people I in the mix, and I, I understand agree with that. You. Like you, but you need to have more people in the mix. You can't have just five or so people in the mix. Yeah, that's going what I'm saying. I agree this, with you. I understand, yeah. but I'm just saying this. Like we need to focus more on the defensive side of the puck here. You defense wins championships. I understand the offense is struggling, but when you have players such as Kate Riley mm -hmm. that can produce that kind of offense. I feel like focusing more on the defense, securing that, protecting Logan going deep into the ECAC is going to be very, very important. Yeah, and important. bringing back the Kate Riley thing, it's a great thing that she's scoring as much as she exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah. But when you switch that, you never, in the NHL, how often do you see a defenseman as your number one point scorer? Not often. The only Not team often, that I'm no. seeing right now is Vancouver with Quinn Hughes. Exactly, and, and Quinn Hughes is elite. Yes. So <laughs> I, I don't think you can say Kate Riley scoring, being the leading point scorer is a bad thing. I think it's good for her specifically, but for the team, that's an issue. You mm -hmm. need to have players stepping up. Sadie Pierce, she's a captain. Where, like, I understand she's in the top five of points, but... At that point, you need her to step up in that captain role and be the one who you can rely on constantly. And I don't think having a defenseman being your scoring weapon is a great thing. And then uh, one other question before we move on and take our first little break here. Who is the key player that you want to step up in the and, or the ECAC playoffs, excuse me? Go ahead, who is Zach. like your key player? I'll go around the table, Stokes. I mean, Stokes. Uh, I, you gotta go with Captain Sadie Pierre. She's been, she's been very good offensively. She's been a great leader for this team, but when it, come, when it comes to the playoffs, you need to step up any which way you look at it. You think of the GOATs such as Tom Brady, Michael Jordan, always great playoff performances. Mm -hmm. You need a leader like Sadie Pierre to step up in those times mm -hmm. to show the locker room, hey, we got this, guys. Kind of like ease the tension during what playoffs bring. Mm -hmm. You need someone like Sadie Pierre to step up. I have a little bit of a different one here, and I wrote this down. Okay. Emerson Jarvis. Okay. No, and I here's like my, Here's She's my been reason. She's off of injury. But She's she off of an injury, but... She was at Ohio State last year. She played in the NCAA National Championship game. She has that experience of being in those big games when it really matters. I think she will be 
huge for this team. And yes, she's not playing first line minutes, but I think she'll be someone where that experience factor will be huge for this team if they can really utilize her to her full strength. Yeah, I agree. And coming off of the injury is going to be tough, and it's going mm -hmm. to take a little bit of time. But I feel like this Harvard game is a warm up for her. Mm -hmm. Get her get her feet back under her legs, and she's going to start produce. For my answer on this, it's kind of difficult to say this, but I think Madison Chandler really needs to step up. I've yeah. not seen the best performance from her recently. Mm -hmm. I got to watch her play last year, and she stepped up mightily, but yeah. she has decreased massively but from last year. You do have to put into effect who are her line mates last year. Exactly. Well, yes, Olivia Mobley and Shay Maloney, who yeah. were two of the top leaders in points on Quinnipiac. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yes, her line is weaker, but that doesn't mean that she has to play weaker as well. Yeah, I definitely That's, agree. I think yeah. she just, she had that scoring help where it was a lot easier to find the back of the net when you have someone like Olivia Mobley who's like finding you constantly. Like That makes it a lot easier. And I'm not saying that she shouldn't step up. I think she... She hasn't produced to what she should be producing this year. I just don't know if I'd necessarily say that like this year was such a terrible year for no, her. No, it's not a terrible year, but it's not like her best. Like, obviously, the first year is not going to compare to the yeah. second year right after it. Definitely. But this is definitely a little bit of a down year that we've seen. Yeah. And yeah. we'll see that next year if she decides to stay at Quinnipiac. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. Now that we've talked all things Quinnipiac hockey, we're going to take a break, but don't go anywhere because when we come back, we will talk about our bracket predictions and who to look out for in the tournament. We'll be right back on Inside the ECAC. Welcome back to Inside the ECAC. I'm Katie Velukovich, alongside my fellow B reporters, Anthony Rossi, Eli Ehlers, and Zach Stokinger. Let's take a look at the bracket heading into the first round of postseason play. RPI will be in Rhode Island to play Brown. The Dartmouth Big Green will be facing off against Princeton at Hobie Baker Arena. Union will be traveling to take on the Yale Bulldogs in New Haven. And a couple of miles north, Harvard will be going to Hamden to play the Bobcats. Any initial thoughts on the first round matchup, guys? Well, I mean, I'm really interested to see this Yale Union series. Yale is one of those teams that I've been looking at recently, mm -hmm. and I've been a little bit questioning their play during regular season play. But I know how good this team is. Karina D'Antonio, Pew Dukaric, El Harchi. They're yeah. a good team. They're yeah. not a bad team. And they could be ranked in the top eight if there wasn't an existing Cornell, St. Lawrence, Colgate, Clarkson. That ring a bell for anybody? Yeah, yeah exactly. A little bit. Yeah. Maybe the top yeah. eight teams in the country. Um, but Yale is a solid team. And another one that I'm going to a little bit of a preview is that Princeton series. And I'm a little excited for that because I know me and Eli have a little bit of disagreeing opinions on that series. Yeah, we'll have to see. For me, I think it's got to be the number nine RPI versus number eight Brown. I think that's going to be a really good game. And I think it could really go either way. But, I mean, we'll get into that in our brackets a little bit, but I think that's going to be the toughest game, and I think it's going to be a very tight game. I, my guess, we'll say 3-2. I'm not going to say who, Ooh. but I think it's going to be a 3-2 like game. I like it. I like it. What about uh, you, Zach? I'm going to have to go with what Rossi said over here. I, I like the Yellow Bulldogs, but I'm going to add a little bit of spice. I'm going to send it over to Princeton and Dartmouth. I yes. think this game is going, to be a that is going to be a very good game. Uh, it's going to be very close. It's going to end in regulation, but it's going to be a 3-2 victory for Princeton. Both of these teams really good in regular season play where we saw them come to Hamden. And, I mean, in the, in the tournament, it's anybody's game. So I like Absolutely. that game. I like that. Well, it's time to take a look at the bracket predictions. Eli, let's start with your bracket. Well, my bracket, we got a couple upsets. In the first round, I have RPI beating Brown 3-2 like we just talked about. Then I have number 10 Dartmouth beating Princeton in that first round. Ooh. I think it may not be the strongest prediction when you're looking at like the season stats, but I think they can do it. I think he's got Yale in the semis. I think Ooh. Yale will beat Union in that first round, and I think Quinnipiac will handle Harvard. Now moving on to the next round, Colgate is going to beat Dartmouth. I think that's going to be a quick, easy one, two nothing. Colgate will handle business. Clarkson RPI. Clarkson's going to win that. I don't really think there's much of a debate with that. I think Clarkson is probably one of the best teams, if not the best, in the ECAC. We'll get into that a little later. Yale's going to beat St. Lawrence oh in that second round. This is it's, just crazy. It, it could go either way. Let's make that very clear. I think it I could think it go could either, either way. I think it could either, but I just don't see St. Lawrence I mean, losing to Yale. It's the number three team I know that in they're the, the number ECAC, three team. The number but eight you, team you in just, the country. You just said that think, Yale's a good team. I didn't say it was going to be a bad series. I just don't see St. Lawrence losing that series. I think I, I agree with the, I agree with Eli here. Oh I mean, wow. I, I think oh I think Yale's are like a sneaky, a sneaky good team here. But in my bracket, I have the Quinnipiac Bobcats defeating Harvard pretty handily. 
Uh, Yale is going to kind of not walk all over, but they're going to defeat Union. Prince is going to take care of Dartmouth in a close game, and Brown and RPI another close game. Uh, Brown's not going to do well against Colgate. Clarkson's going to take care of Princeton. Yale is going to defeat St. Lawrence. I think St. Lawrence is your is my St. Lawrence is my pick to be the upset. Qu so here's my question: Is it going to yeah. be a three-game series for that? Yeah, uh, yeah, probably. Um, but the game that I want to question you right. about is the Quinnipiac Cornell series. How do you not see that game? How do you not see that series going to three games? Yeah. It's just confusing to me because yes, I understand you have Cornell winning. I also have Cornell winning, but. That game, or that series, should go to three games, no question in my mind. I just, looking, when we had Cornell a couple weeks ago in Hampton, I was not, I did not like the Bobcats play at all. I think they're going to sweep them. They had I, a comeback. <laughs> I understand. I understand. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Let me explain for the love of God, you two. Okay, so what I'm trying to say here is I don't think the Bobcats are clutch this year. I don't think that they are. I understand they had this big comeback and all these la da 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 stats, but <laughs> when it comes down okay. to it, guys, when it comes down to it, guys, when it comes down to it, Bobcats will not perform. They will not perform. When the lights are on them, when the lights are the brightest, they won't perform. Now, moving on. Late <laughs> in the semifinals, Yale runs into a brick wall known as Colgate. Yes. And Cornell <laughs> loses to Clarkson. And then I have Clarkson winning it all. I think Clarkson can beat Colgate. Rossi, for the love of God, can I finish my point? <laughs> yes. All right. Yes. So that's that. Those are my final predictions. Okay, Rossi. All now right. let's hear. <laughs> let's stop yapping over here. Let's take a look at my bracket. So I got RPI beating Brown. You got Princeton beating Dartmouth in that first game. Yale beating Union. I know I took a bunch of the favorites in this game. I, I don't see Brown walking all over or RPI walking all over Brown. Excuse me. But RPI kind of wins that game. Uh, Yale does not beat St. Lawrence. I picked one, two, three, four in my quarterfinals. They're going to be really good quarterfinal games, except those top two, because I think Clarkson and Colgate are going to be dominant, and that's why I have them in my championship. Cornell is going to be an interesting game against Colgate, is yeah. where I have it. The one versus the four in the semifinals is going to be really good yeah. in Hamilton as well. Not too far away from Ithaca, so it's going to be a really, really good game in that semifinal. Yeah. But, Katie, mm. let's see your championship prediction. Let's throw up the championship graphics right now. Katie, who do you have in the championship? In the championship, I got to go with Colgate. They were a very strong team, and they are 18-4 and four in the ECAT, and they've won against Brown, which was also a tough team at the beginning. So for that reason, I picked uh, Colgate. You have St. Lawrence and in I, the finals, which I is I do have St. Lawrence. Uh, I do have St. Lawrence. They are a tough team, and the Bobcats have lost them. They did come back from an 0-3 in the third quarter, but then ultimately lost in overtime. But, like, you've got girls like Abby Hustler on that team. She has 28 assists and 24 goals. Like, she is a tough player. She's and a not to mention Julia Gosling as and, well. Yeah. And yes. Nordstrom and Net, they are a good team, but I agree with Stoke. They could be the upset over, or Yale could be the upset over them. Yeah. I don't see them losing in that first round, but I don't think they're going to do well in that semifinal round because yeah. they haven't made it there in a very long time. And you talk about last year, they played Quinnipiac really, really tough, and they are absolutely deserving of this number three seed in the ECAC. Most yeah. definitely. I think they're a very good team, and I think they've shown all year that they have what it takes to be in the like top ten of the entire country, not just the – ECAC. So I think for them, it, they're a very good team, and I think they have a good chance. I just personally don't see them winning at all. Yeah. I think it has to be Clarkson. Knowing how strong that team is, their forwards, probably any of that forward line, of their four forward lines, could be a starting line. Because they're disagree. so deep yeah. offensively. I, 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 have to, I have to agree with um, – I have to agree with uh, Eli here. Clarkson's just such a great team. I understand Colgate's that number one seed, but Clarkson overall, when you have a brick wall in Michelle Pachesnik, I mean, it's it's gonna Pachesnik it's gonna be easy good, sledding. But you gotta remember who's in net for Colgate. That would be either Kaylee Osborne or Hannah Murphy, who are debatably almost better than Michelle Pachesnik in most games. And you gotta remember who's in front of her as well, Daniel Serdakny. Christina Colton Akova. Well, let's talk about yeah, Colton well, We have to mention Colton Akova. Simpson. I can we keep have, going down the list. Understand. What so, happened to Colton Akova? Well, she did. She is. She was out for four games, 
but she is now back with the team. So she's, she's going to be rusty. She's exactly. not going to be at the team. It's going to be rusty. like an Emerson Jarvis situation. Not not to that extent, but she, there's going to be a lot of rust mm -hmm. in that those questions going down the line in such a tough tournament that is the ECAC tournament. Absolutely. I, that's the question that we run into, and I, that's where Clarkson beats Colgate. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, now that we've seen all the brackets and championship picks, who is the team that you guys are thinking to go under the radar as a sleeper team? Uh, Zach, I'm going to start with you. Well, I'm going to have to go with that team down on Whitney Avenue. For those of you who don't know, I'm going to have to go with the Yale Bulldogs. Uh, s players such as Seller Ella Hartshe Jr., Pia Dukarich, Jordan Ray, and the first year, Stephanie Stanen. Impact players for the Bobcats. We've seen it in three games that they've played. Impact players against the Bobcats. Against, right? against the yes. Bobcats, yes, of course. For the Bulldogs, a lot of B words. But, <laughs> you know, they only went one and two against the Bobcats this season, getting that late season victory uh, in an overtime win. Um, what I liked about the, the Yale team, they played each and every game so hard. You gotta yeah. have, you got like that kind of culture is really good for winning a national championship. When you're going up against debatably better talent you've yeah. got to have that drive to win those games and i mean they've recently been in a lot better form than the bobcats they've also been better yeah. informed than people the teams around them in the standings in princeton and brown so i think that they're going to be they're kind of on this rocket ship i think they can get more fuel and i think they'll be able to go far so for me it came down to either yale or quinnipiac and i was looking over stats 11 seniors or grad students on quinnipiac's roster Two seniors or grads on the L roster. Yeah. So you have for Quinnipiac me, as your sleeper. I have Quinnipiac as my sleeper. Oh, okay. For the fact that they have that experience, they have 11 seniors or grads. Plus, you have to include Emerson Jarvis, who was just in an NCAA national championship, like we talked about. And I think that experience is going to be huge. You look at last year in their NCAA first round, they won three to two in triple overtime. So that experience aspect of you've been in those tough situations where you have to dig extra deep. I think that experience is going to be able to help this team get further than just, oh, we're beating Harvard and we're done. But Rossi, I want to hear, who do you have as your sleeper team? So I went a little bit different than both of you two. Okay. And I went a team that's very under the radar. I don't think that they're going to go insanely far, but they could create some havoc in the ECAC. I went with the Princeton Tigers. Okay. Now I understand that they're not the best team. But you got to look who's on that team. It's Sarah Fillier, Izzy Wonder, and then Emerson O'Leary, who's been really solid. Sarah Paul's been pretty good as well. Their goaltending hasn't been that good this year behind Taylor Highland, Jennifer Onowich. It's not really that insane this year. And they've run a three-goalie rotation. Mm -hmm. So it's been difficult at times. But the Princeton team is not to be truly underrated because, as we've brought up, multiple times on this very desk in multiple different shows in multiple different segments sarah fillier is most possibly the number one overall pick in the upcoming pwhl draft and she is going to create a little bit of havoc in the ecc not saying that princeton is going to win a semi-final series best of three against probably clarkson will be their opponent yeah probably yeah. not but princeton could create a little bit of a tough time but and i will agree with you in a sense yeah. here that they have put up good numbers against these top ranked teams. They haven't they're ranked won. in the top 15. They're too. ranked in the top 15. Yeah. They haven't won many of those ranked opponents when you're looking in the ECAC. Like they played Quinnipiac very tight. It went to overtime. Quinnipiac had to fight back into that game when they were in Hobie Baker, when they were at Hobie Baker. So I think I agree with you, but I just don't know if I would necessarily call them my sleeper team. And to your point on the talent of Princeton, the, the talent is no question. Yes. But you mentioned potential number one PWHL draft pick. I want to bring it to the NHL draft pick last year. Connor Bedard, team made the playoffs, the Regina Pats. Pats. They didn't go with that far. They, he, yeah. You have a generational talent. The next Gretzky, they call him. And he only made it, he, they only made it into the first. They only made and it into the playoffs. They didn't even yeah. win. So that's that's my point. Even when you have great talent, great individual talent, it really depends on the team chemistry moving forward. And if you don't have good enough team chemistry, like the Quinnipiac Bobcats, like Cornell, like Colgate, like Clarkson, like St. Lawrence, hell, like even Brown or Yale, you're not. You can't win those games. It, it's a great sleeper pick, but I don't see them going that far. All right, I think we've done enough talking. Katie, who is your sleeper pick for this tournament? I have to agree with Eli. I went with the Bobcats, and I'm going to have to mention Logan Andrews again, how she is a very good goalie. And as I looked at like her stats, she averages about 20 or above saves 
almost each game. Yeah. And as we mentioned earlier, obviously the defense has been big scoring offensively. The offense does need to be better, but like Sadie Pierre being the number one scorer for this team, you also have Kayla Lamarche, who has been exceptional this year. So Especially as a first year. Especially yeah. as a first year, yeah. yeah. I think that we can all agree that these teams are sleepers. They won't go insanely far. They won't win the tournament. Yeah, and, God, no, I, mean, and I think it's hard when you're looking at teams like Colgate and Clarkson yes. and St. Lawrence, as we've Absolute said before. powerhouses, exactly. to say the least. They're, they're big-time teams, so I think it's hard to necessarily say that, like, oh, it's a sleeper team that they're going to go all the way. I, I don't think that happens. It's an uphill. Yeah. Knowing how hard the ECAC is as a conference. Yeah, it's an uphill battle. You, any way you put it, you could you could say Harvard is your sleeper team, and they're fighting <laughs> eleven almost ranked teams exactly. through the entire tournament. Exactly. So there, there's nowhere to hide in the ECACs, to say the least. Absolutely, and I completely agree with you. Knowing how many ranked teams there are in this ECAC this conference, is, this is definitely one of the best years in the ECAC. I had a blast having this show with you guys. This was super fun, Katie. Why don't you take us out? So we've talked about who may win and what team might be under the radar. So my last question for you guys, who is the player in, that you're each looking out for in this postseason and I when the stakes are so high? Question. You forgot. Wow, I'm, I'm like... Unprofessional. I'm, wow. Unprofessional. Just my been, mind's going crazy. We're just yeah. debating yeah. such yeah. great debate. I, I guess I'll start then. Yeah. I'm going to go with Daniel Serdakny off of Colgate. Obviously, I'm not going to go Colton Akova, but I am going to go with her sidekick, so to say, or maybe the main character on Colgate too, because she's been really solid. She was one of the leading point scorers in the entire NCAA last year, and she won the MVP of the ECAC last year for Colgate in the entire ECAC. So with Daniel Serdakny, you're getting good minutes. Look at this offensive pressure right there, and then look at the shot by Serdakny. This is the pressure that I'm seeing her gel with Colton Akova, Biederman, Simpson, that entire team gels. Their chemistry is crazy. And I could really point out any Colgate player, like I could have chosen Allison Simpson. Yeah. I could have chose Christina Kaltanikova. I didn't. I chose Daniel Serdakny because she's played in every single game this year for Colgate and has dominated in almost every single game. The one team that has shut her down is actually Quinnipiac. And that is really interesting to me because Serdakny has put up numbers on Quinnipiac, so is Kaltanikova, but they were able to shut down those two because they know them so well. Mm -hmm. But Serdakny is a player to look out for. I'm interested to see who you two picked. So for me, I went with Nicole Gosling from Clarkson. And my reason why is she ripped on Quinnipiac. She had a big season when it came to playing Quinnipiac. And overall, this entire year, she was phenomenal. 34 games, 34 points, 13 goals, and 21 assists. Against Quinnipiac, she had one assist, and she had the overtime winner that ended Quinnipiac in that game. So I, I think, for me, it has to be her, just because she is what has driven Clarkson offensively, and she's what has helped this team move forward throughout the entire season. But Zach, what do you got? Well, Eli, I'm going to stick right with you with Clarkson, but I'm going to shift it to the goaltending. Michelle Pachesnik been lights out for the for sorry the Clarkson Golden Knights this season. I mean, she has a 20 she's a 23 3 and 1 record. She's between the pipes with a 1.23 goals against average. Eight shutouts this season has Clarkson in that number 3 spot and I've been pounding the table all, all this whole time about how defense wins championships and when you have a netminder that's that good that you can rely that on. you can rely on. I mean, yeah. yeah. Everything starts at the goaltender. If the goaltender's solid, you're gonna go, you're gonna be fine. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if she has a couple shutouts this tournament. That's a couple how couple shutouts this tournament. Yeah, I don't think that they well, might get a shutout. Can, can, gee, like <laughs> Rossi, I, Anthony, I, under, I, under, I understand that you don't believe this, but <laughs> I think I have that much belief that she's gonna okay. be that good for Clarkson. Right? I think I think maybe two shutouts is my guess for her. Two it, shutouts, two and shutouts. that's a few. Whoa. Okay, you know what, I, I do like the hot takes, and I like it. I think that she's going to perform really well, and I love your pick. The pick that I don't love is this one right here, with Abby Hustler from St. Lawrence. What are you, are you crazy? She's their top player on this team. She scored the most goals throughout the season. She, like, she's a good player, so that's, for me, why I picked her. Like, She's, but, she's a good player. Well, Rossi, you gotta understand that she wants to, St. Lawrence for Katie is going to the finals. Mm -hmm. you, you have that with Abby Hustler. If she gets, if she gets on, if she gets on one, she I could, like she the could bring this team. I feel like the player to watch if you're looking at St. Lawrence is Nordstrom or Julia Gosling. And that's like, 
that's a that's a that's, fair, a, that's a fair anybody point. Else. That's a fair point. But when it comes to playoff time, it could be anybody that comes. What out. did she do against Quinnipiac? Exactly. She also, a yeah, she scored a hat trick against Quinnipiac, though. That, that but they're, they're in the top ten in the nation. <laughs> That's all the time we have for the Inside the ECAC Women's Hockey Edition. Stay tuned to Q30 Sports for men's ice hockey inside the ECAC postseason preview. To see content on Quinnipiac's game versus Harvard, make sure to go to at Q30 Sports on X. Thank you to everyone for working hard behind the scenes. For Eli, Zach, and Anthony, I'm Katie Vlukovic. Have a good evening.